mistake like this. It is, if she bothered to research and find out the fact that he survived heart disease but died from leukemia and actually died because he committed suicide because of all the pain that l the leukemia had put him in, if she found out all that, then surely she came across the facts that he lived to be 70 years old. And yet, what's the answer, Sally? What's the answer for saying that he died in the prime of his life when you know that he lived to be 70 years old? That's pathetic. <clears throat> but it gets better, too, right? Because he died of suicide, which is, is plainly indicated here. His suicide, the implication being his suicide was brought on when he realized that his Spartan regime, regime was not working. The implication being that he was so depressed that his low-fat diet had not cured him of leukemia that he just, oh, cruel world, I'm going to end it all. My diet didn't work. I'm a complete failure. No, sorry, Sally. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that he began to suffer severe pain and complications related to his decades-long fight with leukemia, which had been in remission for 27 years. I'd say that's pretty good. So was he died? Did, did he kill himself because he was depressed over the failure of his diet, or could he not take the pain of living with cancer anymore. What do you think? We shouldn't we shouldn't have to die of either heart disease or cancer or consume a diet that makes us depressed. The implication being that if you eat a low fat diet, you are going to be depressed and you're going to kill yourself like Nathan Pritikin. Was Pritikin depressed or did he have severe pain and complication? from leukemia. Remember, again, this is a foundational paragraph in her section that purports to prove the thesis that fats and cholesterol are good for you. And the justification for this is that if you eat a low-fat diet, you're going to end up killing yourself because you're depressed. Now just ask yourself, is this the reasoning and are these the arguments of somebody that you should trust, entrust your health to? Do you want to entrust your health to somebody who tells you that a man died in the prime of his life when he died at the age of 70? Do you want to entrust your health to somebody who tells you that this man committed suicide because he was depressed over the failure of his uh diet, which had gained nationwide publicity and has influenced millions of people since, do you want to believe somebody who says that he was depressed over the failure of that diet when in fact he died because he was in pain over because he had cancer? Just ask yourself whether this is a trustworthy person or not, or whether this information has been completely skewed to lead you down a certain path and to grease the skids for you to accept her proposal that fat and cholesterol are a boon to health instead of one of its greatest obstacles. If we now go on to read this part in Wikipedia about this note from uh, a doctor who knew Pritikin at the end of his life, who, who actually worked with him for a few decades, he says that when the leukemia came out of remission, that he was convinced to take chemotherapy, even though he was extremely opposed to it, and that he had an extreme adverse reaction to chemotherapy, including liver and kidney damage. I don't know, Sally, do you think he was depressed or do you think he was in a lot of pain because of, because of chemotherapy and liver and kidney damage? What do you think? He began the treatment quite thin and lost 30 pounds 
following the chemotherapy. Yeah, that sounds healthy. But I'm sure that had nothing to do with his suicidal state of mind. He was just depressed over the failure of his diet. Pritikin traveled from California to a hospital in New York for a second opinion. He was told there was no hope and that he would most likely die quite soon. He said goodbye to his family and sent them out to eat dinner. And then he severed his brachial arteries with a scalpel and bled to death in his hospital bed. But take Sally Fallon's advice. You'd better not eat a low-fat diet. Otherwise, you're going to end up depressed and you're going to kill yourself like Nathan Pritikin did in the prime of your life when you're 70 years old. Take it from Sally. And oh, by the way, just as it's irrelevant that he saved himself from heart disease, it's also completely irrelevant that at the time of his autopsy, they examined his coronary arteries and they were perfectly clean despite having had significant angina in the days before routine coronary angiography. Pritikin developed his diet initially to treat himself. His angina went away early on because he became a low-fat vegetarian. For all apparent purposes, his diet served him well. But that's irrelevant because if you, even if you can clean up heart disease, which is really not a big deal whatsoever, if you can clean up heart disease, it doesn't matter because well, it's certainly not worth eating a low-fat diet in order to accomplish that because even if you can save yourself from heart disease, you're just going to become depressed and wind up killing yourself at the prime of your life at 70 years old. So you guys decide for yourselves whether you want to trust the advice of a man like Nathan Pritikin or a man who spits on his grave or someone who spits on his grave like Sally Fallon and makes all kinds of vicious lies up about him so that she can push her nutritional ideology on you. And that's not to say that you shouldn't do research into the ex into the scientific claims that she's making, but if you think a person <laughs> that can't be trusted to report the basic facts about a man's life accurately can be trusted to report areas of significant controversy and areas that are uh, scientifically complex. If you think she can be trusted with that, <clears throat> then go right ahead and place your life in Sally Fallon's hands. And good luck with that.